Let's start with the class of P. The class of P consists of decision problems that are solvable in polynomial time on a deterministic Turing machine. If n is the size of the input, the time complexity is n to the power O of 1, which is basically a constant. Now the class of NP, uh, the most common misconception new learners might fall to is that NP means not polynomial time, but nope, it is the class of problems that can be solved in non-deterministic polynomial time. These problems can be decided on a non-deterministic Turing machine in polynomial time. The solutions for these problems can be verified in polynomial time on a deterministic Turing machine. According to this definition, there are two possibilities. All the problems in P are also in NP because problems in P can also be decided by a non-deterministic Turing machine in polynomial time. And P is a proper subset of NP. The other possibility is that P equals NP. There were instances where problems believed to be in the class of NP condensed to P. This is an open problem in theoretical computer science. Now, all the problems that are intrinsically harder than those that can be solved by a non-deterministic Turing machine in polynomial time are classified to be in the class NP hard. These are the problems that can never be in the class of P. But this sort of classification is too broad as it contains problems that do not even have polynomial time verifiers and also can contain problems that are not even decidable. Okay, so classifying a problem to be NP hard talks very little about the complexity. As many problems of real-world importance are in the class of NP, a better question to ask is, are there problems in NP that are definitely not known to be decided in polynomial time? Turns out, there are. In early 1970s, Cook and Levin discovered certain problems in NP whose individual complexity is related to that entire class. If a polynomial time algorithm exists for any of these problems, all problems in NP would be solvable in polynomial time. Basically, every problem in NP reduces to the special class of problems classified to be in the class of NP complete. The implications of the class of NP complete are huge. All it requires to win a million dollars is to pick a problem from NP complete class and provide a polynomial time algorithm to solve it. Though this may not appeal to you much, think of the practical implications of the existence of NP complete problems. If you are delegated to work on an ambitious app that solves complex problems in real time or less time, which turns out to be NP complete, you can confidently argue the case with your supervisor. The best deterministic method that is used currently to decide problems in NP complete use exponential time. Let me summarize these four complexity classes using this infographic. As most theoretical computer scientists believe that P is not equal to NP, let's focus on this one. First, there are problems that are in the class P. And then there are problems in NP for which polynomial time deciders may or may not exist. And then there are the special class of NP problems. For sure, they don't have a polynomial time decider. So those are in NP complete. And we have the NP hard class, which is too broad. It contains all the problems for which there are no polynomial time deciders. <laughs>